welcome. I'm very pleased to finally be able to bring this pattern of mine to you. This is one of my favorite personal designs, used very frequently in my house. Probably the most used pattern that I've designed. Um, I'm going to teach you how to make it with the tool option and I'm going to teach you how to make it with the scrubby option. And these are all, this is Red Hearts, this is just an uh, online purchase. You can also get tool at Walmart in the canisters and it you will need to have your tool about four or five inches. I prefer it to be no less because then you get a really nice size scrubby in the middle there. And, and then you also have this option which is Red Heart Scrubby which is really ideal in the middle of here. Now at first it was a little intimidating when I looked at this yarn like oh no how am I going to work with it but I will show you how to make one of these little scrubbies. It's actually surprisingly easy and not as terrifying as I thought it was going to be. So it actually works out quite well and that color is a lime and then for this color here that I have going on it is creme de la creme green tones and it works up this cotton I like the best personally because it works up so well now you could use any four ply cotton for this pattern um, worsted weight cotton and it will work up just as well okay so you will need a darning needle for this project make sure it's one that has a fairly good size hole because you need to be able to sew in your tool now you have the option of using between size 4 and 5 this one here is a size 4 hook because I do like my claws not to feel like there's a lot of holes in them so I really like going a 4. It's completely up to you on what you want to use. And then obviously you need some scissors for cutting your ends. So let's get started. Now this tool is some previously bought tool that I purchased and then I pre-cut it. So you have two options. You can do um, a chain four and then slip stitch it together to make your ring for the first part of this scrubby. Or you can do a magic ring. So I'm gonna show you both options. I'm gonna show you a magic ring in this one and then when I work the Red Heart Scrubby, I will show you how to do actually the opposite I will do chain four in this one and magic ring in that one so create your slip knot this is how I create a slip knot I, I have the yarn here I cross it over my fingers I put my yarn underneath grab the yarn and pull it through there you have your slip knot on your hook now this does not count as a chain what is on your hook so you're going to chain one, two, three, four, and then you're going to do a slip stitch to join to make a ring. Sorry, just make this a bit easier. I'm going to move that to you. Now you're going to chain up two. This does not count as the stitches that you're going to create in here. And then you're going to double crochet 12 in the center. There's one. Now a double crochet is yarn over, insert hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now there's two on there because we're not counting these two chains so far. Let's do another one, yarn over, insert hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now you need to do 12 of these all together. I'll show you two more before I can skip ahead. So here's 
yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And you see we have one, two, three, four, let's do one more. Yarn over, insert hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And as you can see, with this method of the chain four, you can work over this tool and then cut it at the end when you're done. Okay, now I have one here that has the 12. I've already pre-crowned them, but I'll show you how to count them again. So remember, these don't count. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So to finish this off, you are going to slip stitch to the top of that first double crochet. Insert your hook, yarn over, pull through the stitch, and pull through the first stitch that was on your hook. And that is how you join to make a... Okay, so for the next round, as you can see on here, is the last round of the scrubby that we will do before we add the cloth. So we're going to chain up two again. This will not count as the stitch itself. And you're going to double crochet two in that very same stitch that you slip stitched into. So there's one, two. Then you're going to double crochet two in the next. And you're going to double crochet two in the next. Now you're going to do two double crochets in each stitch all the way around. So you should end up with 24 by the time you're done. And you can pull that tight. I'll do a couple more to show you. Double crochet one, double crochet two in each stitch all the way around. And then you'll end up with 24 stitches for that second round. Okay, and when you get to the end, you will have it, it will look like this. You will have two in the last stitch. Be careful not to count this slip stitch as one. I make sure I do that a little bit tighter so I don't mistake it. And you're gonna slip stitch again to the top of that double crochet. And then you're gonna pull it through as a slip stitch again and then that part is complete. And then you just take your darning needle. Now here's a little trick I'm going to show you when working with tulle that I find is really helpful. It also is really helpful with the scrubby yarn to do this method that I'm about to show you. Of course my tool is not going to work for me, is it? thing. I can do this. <laughs> I can do this. There we go. Okay, so a little trick that I like to do when sewing with the tool is I like to go through the stitches backwards when I'm sewing in my ends because it, it'll create less snagging when you're sewing in your ends. So go through there and then I'll go across here. And it helps it just glide right through without, like when you go to pull this out sometimes going with your needle forward, it's almost impossible because it, it won't go through all those fibers as easily. So there we go. That should do it. We'll take our scissors, snip that off, and then we're ready to go ahead with the next stage. Yeah, I'll just use this one that I did here. Now we're going to take our cotton, creme de la creme, and right where you ended, you're going to go in the next stitch, you're going to pull that yarn through, and again, you're going to chain up two. This again will not count as your stitch. You're going to double crochet in that same stitch that you joined your yarn and then you're going to double crochet four more. One, 
two, three, and four. Now you'll see, as I'm doing it, I just work over that yarn. Now I do personally like to take this again with my hook or my needle later and then re-sew it back through just to secure it extra nice for better quality. Now we've done one, two, three, four, five. Now for every corner in this pattern, you will create the same stitches. Now you see here, these will be the same all the way out. So it just kind of helps when you're doing the pattern to know exactly what the corners are. Every single corner is two double crochet, so one, two, chain three, one, two, three, and then two more double crochet in that same stitch. Okay, so as we did here, we are now going to continue with five more double crochet across. My yarn's not cooperating. There we go. That's two, three, four, and five. Now I'll repeat this corner for you one more time just to show you how they are. Okay, so you're going to do one, two double crochet, then you're going to chain three, you're going to do two more double crochet in that same stitch to create your corner. Now you will continue. Okay, so to finish off this, you will do five double crochet, the corner stitch I showed you, five more double crochet, and the corner stitch again. Now, I have one here. Be sure to pause the video if I get ahead of you, and then you, you can join with me as soon as you're ready. So, I'm at the corner again. I showed you how far I went there. The rest of the way, you're going to slip stitch that first double crochet be sure to pull that slip stitch tight because you don't want to mistake it for a stitch like you would um, in the scrubby in my scrubby pattern on the written pattern I have it where I do two double crochet together because initially I wasn't pulling my slip stitch tight enough and it left a gap so if you pull that slip stitch tight enough you're not gonna have a gap in there at all so to begin this round again, you're going to chain up two, double crochet, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, to get to that corner. Then you're going to do the corner stitch again of two double crochet. They're always the same. Chain three. Two more double crochet in that corner. One. Sorry. Two. The yarn isn't cooperating for me. I'm going to put this over here. Okay, so don't miss that first stitch again. And you go across here going one. Two, three, four, five. I'll be right back. <laughs> Sorry. Five. We're on six, seven, eight, nine. And then you're at your corner again, which you will do two double crochet, chain three, two more double crochet. Now again, when you start your next part of double crochet, be sure not to miss that first stitch. Now you'll notice we only had seven here, and then we had the corner, and then we had nine. Well, that's because there's two more that you'll finish up when you come back around here just before you join. And again, you'll do your corners the same way as before. Now I have one here. 
in this really pretty tea rose color. This is also creme de la creme. And this is also red heart scrubby. Um, super nice. This one's called coconut. I'll show you how to make a scrubby in that one as soon as I'm done. So again, like I told you, you come around here to the corner and you need to do the two more to equal the nine. So you're going to have five more than the first round. So here you had five double crochet and then in this one you're going to have nine and it continues that way for the next rows as well. I'll just show you a little bit more here. Slip stitch to join, chain two, double crochet in that same slip stitch to the end. There's two, three, four, five, sorry, six, my yarn is not cooperating today. There you go, I'm back. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine. Now again in this row you start we start off here. I have nine and then there'll be ten, eleven, twelve, nine, excuse me, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. So you'll see that's five, nine, thirteen, and it'll continue that way for as many rows as you'd like to do. Now I'm going to do a corner again, double crochet, two, chain three, double crochet, two. Oh, I love this color, it's so pretty. And you're going to make sure you double crochet those 13 all the way across and then do your corner again. And you'll see that's row one, two, three, four, that was row five. And each multiple row after will have four more stitches in it. So 5, 9, 13, 17, 21, and so on, depending on how big you would like to make your cloth. Now, I have one here. And the same. That's just about done. This is a, um, if you like it a little smaller, I've done ones where it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 rows, and I haven't done this 8th one. This one I made a little bit larger, and you can go even larger if you like your claws to be quite big. And, uh, yeah, it all depends on what you prefer. I like it at mine a little bit smaller, just easier to handle. So, again, you'll have your multiples of 5 in between, so this is 5, and two, 4 more is 9, 13, 17, 21, and this one will be 25. So we can double check it for you if you want. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Now, for the last round, you slip stitch to join, and then you chain up one, and then we're going to do a single crochet in that very same stitch. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, the count might be different depending on how many rows you do. So I guess I really don't need to count because you're just going to create like a little bit of a nice border all the way around your cloth by single crocheting in every stitch all the way around except for when you get to your corners. When you get to your corners you're going to do five. One, and this will help lay everything, make it nice and flat in those corners. Two, three, four, and five, and then don't forget that first stitch right there again. And then you go across with a single crochet all the way across. Five in this corner again, single crochet, five in the bottom corner, and so on. And then you slip stitch to join to your first single crochet to finish off and sew in your ends, which will be right here. Slip stitch to join to that one. 
and then your border will be all finished. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to make a scrubby out of this scrubby yarn. Now on this one I showed you the chain four on the first one. On this one I'm going to show you the magic ring. So you start like you're doing a slip knot like I showed you in the beginning. Insert the hook and pull it through and then you stop right there. So there's your magic ring that you're going to work into right there. So you're going to chain up to like so and try to just ignore all those fluffy things. That'll just make you a little more paranoid that you can't work with this yarn. It's actually considerably easy to work with. It's not hard at all like I was thinking it would be. I was thinking it would be rather tedious but you just have to ignore all those little um, tenules, branches, <laughs> call them what you will. <laughs> And uh, I'm not sure how many I've done here. I'll count them in a second because I'll show you how easy it is to count you. You just have to separate the yarn a bit to find your stitches because it is a little bit harder than other yarns. I'll show you how to count it so you can make sure you have your 12. I'm not sure what I have here. I think I'm 10. I'm going to guess and see how close I get. Let's back it up here. I'm going to pull this a little bit. Sorry, I'm out of view there. I'm going to pull this a little bit. Eleven. Of course, I'm guessing. I'm going to go back and count so we can see here. Pull that out. Okay, so remember your chain up two didn't count. And if you pull it apart, you can actually see the stitch in between there. So there's one, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, eleven. I was close. Need one more. So now you're gonna pull this tight. This can be a bit tricky, but it does work. Just give it a good tug. Now you're gonna find that first stitch which is right there. You can pull it apart so you can see it and then you're going to slip stitch to that top one right there to join. Now, see? There you go. That's your first row of your scrubby. So you got one chain up two and you're going to do two double crochet in each stitch all the way around just like I showed you on the original scrubby and I might as well just show you real quick. So if you have any questions regarding this pattern that I may have overlooked, please feel free to comment with them and I can help you out. And obviously subscribe and ring that bell so that you can be notified when my next video comes up. I already have one in mind that I'm really excited about. And yeah, I think you'll, uh, I'm hoping you'll enjoy my videos. Let's see, I'm almost around here. So you're doing two all the way around until you get to that first stitch. So don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so I can, you can be notified when I do my next tutorial. I really hope you enjoy my pattern. Um, let me know. You know, by liking it as well, will let me know that you enjoyed it. And have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.